Hey guys, welcome to my review of the Marvel Avengers beta, or final impressions, not really a first impressions, I already did one of those, you can check it out, there'll be a card somewhere, or a link in the description, or end card, the, the, some, something will be somewhere, and you can click it and watch that video. I actually paid the campaign three times just to make sure I didn't miss anything, so without further ado, here's my review of the Marvel's Avengers beta. We'll start with the story because I know a lot of people are worried that maybe this is another Anthem 2.0. We actually start off with what we saw in a lot of the trailers, but this is an abridged version of A-Day, the prologue chapter. It jumps straight into when the Terrigen uh, reactor starts breaking on the helicarrier. The Terrigen reactor is the catalyst for what the events, etc., etc. We open up with Thor, and that gives us a good feeling because he is a very powerful character. There's a lot of set pieces in in the story. There's bits where you have to rescue civilians, battle different types of mercenaries. The whole thing's very cinematic. Now, this doesn't. I know this is confusing a lot of people. This does not take place in the MCU. This is more based off of the actual comics just in this universe, which is Cap, Hulk, Iron Man, Thor, and Black Widow. Now in the beta as a whole, you can only play as three of those characters, including Miss Marvel as an extra fourth. And I, I'm, I'm really annoyed actually, the, the prologue made me really, really like Thor and Cap's combat and everything about them. Their design is so cool. Some people don't like Cap so much because it's more of like a traditional military gear instead of like a specialized suit. But his gameplay, honestly, if you ask anyone, it's probably one of the best. This is like a beat-em-up style game. So he's really, really suited to this as well as Black Widow. But we'll get into gameplay in a minute. The second mission features Dr. Banner. And I do mean actual Dr. Banner. You get to play as Bruce Banner, not just the Hulk. And you're searching for one of Tony's long lost kind of like vaults or archives. You get a cool little moment where you get to walk around and talk to Camilla and learn a bit more about the history of this universe before ultimately becoming the Hulk and then, you know, he does his thing, he smashes. Dr. Banner, what do I do? Run. What? Camilla is kind of our view into this world. She is new to the Avengers setting. She's only just recently got her powers after the events of A-Day. We do play with her a, a lot during the hub section as well, which you get to do right after you beat the Hulk mission. And the Hulk mission is actually really cool. It, it, it's this setting where you have to go to either where Jarvis and, and a lot of Tony's old tech is hidden combined with aim repurposing it to kind of booster or bolster the powers of abomination he is a really cool boss fight i love that they stayed true to the character of hulk and a lot of these superhero games a lot of the combat or boss battles are very gimmicky this is mainly because a lot of previous um, superhero games feature heroes that are severely underpowered compared to their villain spider-man batman looking at you i mean it could be worse it could be superman's return and the end boss could be a hurricane but abomination is a great fit for hulk and not only do you fight him normally instead of a gimmicky battle where you have to hurt him with the environment or, or with special attacks or nonsense like that you actually go toe to toe with him and it's really really cool some of your abilities are even contextualized to this fight so that when you hulk smash him hulk charge him etc it does a special animation which is really really nice so that was the story portion of it the story looks really good there is a co-op mission the co-op missions are like a weird blend of some of the multiplayer missions combined what are called drop zone missions in, in the multiplayer campaign so like it is a story mission. You go about kind of the same mission structure as the multiplayer section, which is separate, kind of. And then there's still cutscenes and epic battles, etc. It's just kind of a weird merger of the two. It gives me hope though. It does mean that maybe the campaign isn't fully single player. There will be moments where multiple Avengers can be controlled and you will be able to play co-op with your friends if they're at the same point or ahead of you. Let's move on to gameplay. Well, gameplay is really, really fun, if not simplistic, at least at first. There are characters and I feel like in a way, the characters they chose for the beta were kind of detrimental to what they were trying to showcase. This is because many characters, especially Kamala herself, don't really come into their own until about level 10. Every character has a dodge, light and heavy attack, a ranged attack, and what is called an intrinsic ability, which is a meter below their health bar that you build up with light or heavy attacks, and it will do something unique to that character. On top of that, some characters, to make them feel different, can do things like parry or vault, 
This really helps sell some of the martial arts characters as they need to stay acrobatic in order to survive, even in the comics. Uh, the one little twist on this is Captain America can seemingly indefinitely block as he should, given that he has, you know, the adamantium vibranium shield or the proto adamantium shield, whatever they're going for in this universe. Miss Marvel is kind of a weird character. She's very much more of a Black Widow meets Hulk. Her survivability relies on her ability to dodge or polymorph, which will automatically dodge based on her intrinsic zip bar. Her polymorph ability is also very much tied to her heavy attacks. This also gives us a hint on what kind of upgrades you can get in the game. Now in the beta, we only have one of each page for each character. However, each character has a different one, again, hinting on what we'll have in the full game. It looks like you'll have a page tied to ranged, heavy, movement or intrinsic abilities, and possibly even your ultimate or heroic attacks. The missions we got to play in multiplayer were the horror missions, which is the training room horde mode. The war zone missions, which are kind of open world, you start off in either New York or the Pacific Northwest. These bits feature a lot of traversal, multiple objectives, a lot of high level gear, and then they eventually funnel into an objective that you have to do, either take out enemies, destroy um, a prototype arc reactor that AIM's working on, etc. Drop zone missions are very, very different. They actually involve jumping straight ahead to the end of a war zone mission and, and just are self-contained often in a, an office setting or a building. You have a singular objective, you get it done and you're out. They're about five minutes. They're very good to play with friends when you don't have a lot of time or you wanna just do a brief bit of leveling with your friends or just want a quick bit of loot so you can do one of the larger missions. Now that brings us to iconic missions, which again are kind of like war zone missions. Now these are based story-wise off of one of the characters. The one that we got to do in the game was actually based off the Hulk. He had to go in and stop a facility that was trying to upgrade or create many abominations. Now, honestly, other than just a bit more backstory for that particular character, they're not really any different from the drop zone missions or the war zone missions. Um, I was a bit disappointed. I thought maybe we'd see an iconic villain for that particular hero. Now, what if you does have to play as that hero, normally the host? That's literally about it. And lastly, we have villain encounters. Now, I'm a bit hesitant so far to call these villain encounters. They're kind of like a raid style battle. They take place in a very story based war zone mission. With well, the end goal in this particular one was to take out a large AT-80 style walker and they are actually really really fun. My one concern however being though is that this may be a repeat kind of mission just with different variations of abilities or, or turrets or weapon systems. The reason for this is actually in the mission itself you go into a hangar and see a kind of decommissioned one and then you then proceed to the actual the actual objective in game which involves the giant walker you have a bit of a boss battle you have to take down these ports on it it collapses you attack its eye repeat however every time you do it against adapting new self-defense mechanism it's a pretty cool battle but again it does worry me that they call this a villain encounter and there isn't a villain it's a giant robot that brings me to another slight problem I had with the game so far. If it is literally just aim synthoids and adaptoids and, and beekeepers or... This game will get dull. This will be an anthem game. The game needs to really, really use some of its licensing. In the story, that does happen. Like I said, there's awesome set pieces. There's unique mechanics. There's awesome boss battles that don't rely on gimmicks. There's, there's characters that you have there like Taskmaster and your fight with him having, you know, to mix up your attacks, counter him, etc. I found that fight really, really fun on top of the Unbobination one. But outside of those missions, because the main gameplay loop is the multiplayer side with your friends, once you beat the Cap 8, this is what's going to keep you going. If we're just fighting giant robots, small robots, variation of robots, and some guys with a jetpack and a gun, which might as well be a robot, this game will absolutely bore people. The last two points I want to touch on is the gear system. 
and also the controversy. First, we'll go over the gear system because this has actually added to some of the issues people have with it. Now, some of my peers have complained that the gear does not appear on the actual characters. I, for one, don't mind this. Everything, when you look at the menu and you're equipping your pieces of gear, they're clearly components inside of Iron Man's suit, Black Widow's vest or harnesses or her Widow Bites. And even the Hulk ones are actually genetic adaptations or mutations or engineering. I really don't see how you could have these physically on the outside of him. It'd be a bit weird. Um, I really couldn't see like Destiny style where each piece of gear changes. The last thing I want to touch on is the exclusivity issue. Now, if you don't know, Spider-Man is exclusive to the PS4. Not only is Spider-Man exclusive, there will be a story campaign and exclusive skins and content for the PS4, PS5 version of this. That means also one could deduce very easily that his villains, his role gallery and characters tied to him is, you know, Gwen Stacy, etc., um, are going to be PS4 slash PS5 exclusive. I can't see them adding Doc Ock into one of the iconic missions for the other consoles. It wouldn't make sense without Spider-Man. Another thing that we can kind of extrapolate from this, especially with the announcement of Hawkeye coming and what they said comes with him, which is additional co-op missions, drop strike missions, and an actual story mode that we can also do Spider-Man on top of his um, isolated arc, possibly including his rogues gallery and side characters again, will also have additional missions, which means that even though it doesn't come out to 2021, it is gonna feature less content, potentially more than they're letting on. All right, my final thoughts on this is basically, this game is super fun. I'm still hyped to get it. Has the exclusivity <sighs> affected my decision on which platform to get it? Definitely, definitely. I am a huge Spider-Man fan. The Insomniac Spider-Man game was one of my favorite. I collected the comics as a kid. And you're getting, you know, even if you weren't, you're still getting less content than the other two platforms, which is, <laughs> A whole other issue itself, but in terms of where to buy it, for me, it's a no-brainer to go for the PS4 slash PS5 version. Let me know in the comments which version you're going for, or if you're going to stick to your guns and not get this game at all now. Basically, guys, I had so much fun with this. I have a few concerns. Like I said, the repetitive nature of the missions and the enemies, they could easily fix this. We only got to play about five or six missions. So we'll have to wait and see. The story, I am not worried about. It was really, really good. Incredibly voice, well, voice acted, sorry. And the set pieces and the boss battles in particular were very good. If you found this video helpful, give it a like. Let me know what your thoughts in the comments down below and be sure to check out my what's in the box if you're still picking up the Avengers. Anyways, that's been my thoughts on Avengers. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, bye-bye.